So this is the first uh, comment by one of the other developers of Star Metamorphosis on thousands of stars turning into crystals. I printed this paper out. It's by Daniel Archer. Uh, Daniel has a lot of good points here. I'll read out a few of them for you. Um, says here, quotes taken from thousands of stars turning into crystals. I'll link his paper to the bottom. Quote, the first direct evidence of white dwarf stars solidifying into crystals has been discovered by astronomers at the University of Warwick, and our skies are filled with them. Comment, there is not direct evidence, this is not direct evidence, they only observe atmospheres of white dwarfs. Everything that happens internally is built on many assumptions, and those assumptions fuel their models. They should just report they observed a change or evolution in the spectra of the star planet of the astron. That's very true, Daniel. These people, they like to take very, very little bit of information and apply it and just sweep the floor with everything with massive amounts of assumptions. And, you know, it's not up for question for some reason, but you and I know better. It's totally up for question. Um, quote, white dwarfs have a core of solid oxygen and carbon due to a phase transition during their life cycle, similar to water turning into ice, but at much higher temperatures. Comment, again, we do not know what kind of core these objects have. We can, we can only, we can not know if only surface phenomena are observed. This is speculation on the researchers part, the University of Warwick researchers. They're speculating on the core of these objects. That's all they're doing. They have no idea what's in the center of those. This is a, as opposed to stellar metamorphosis where we know what the internal regions of an ancient evolved star are. We have the Earth, for example. We take seismic recordings and we've measured that the Earth has a solid inner core. And we've, we've also had stars destroy each other and smash each other up to bits, leaving the very central remains left over, which is iron nickel. We find those in meteorites. So we know that ancient stellar cores are iron and nickel meteorites, or iron and nickel alloy. Um, it's very, very different from speculating from far away, using models that use a bunch of assumptions, and when you only have a surface phenomenon to observe. It's light and day. Stellar metamorphosis is so much different than the University of Warwick researchers. Quote, observations made by the Gaia satellite and analyzed data on the star's luminosity and colors. This is confirmation they look at the star's brightness and colors spectra. That is the observation. There's nothing else they have. They only have this spectra. It's like looking at a light bulb and seeing that it's bright and then saying, oh, we know that the filament is tungsten. No, you don't. All you see is the fact that it's bright. You're just looking at it. You're just looking at the, the um, outside regions of it. You don't know that the filament is tungsten. You don't know if it's an LED. You don't know if it's... What what's causing that to be bright? It's it's what they're doing. They're just they're just making their assumptions and the models that they had previously determined to be true, and then building on top of those. But you know we all know better. I'm not gonna beat that into the ground too much. And what's really strange to me is that I noticed. Um, I'm not gonna read his old whole paper out. He has a lot of good points here. I just want to bring out a few of them. Uh, here's a pile up of all the. White, this is, this is a model. This isn't even, these aren't even the observations. They have white dwarf sequence, cool, or cooling sequence model and white dwarf crystallization. You can go ahead and uh, see that on the bottom. Now notice they have, it's bluer to redder. And then you have, what is this? Gaia G absolute magnitude. Okay, you have the absolute magnitude. And <clears throat> basically that's, that's about it. It's a model, and they, I'm assuming they probably have it going this direction, from bluer to redder. But what I have it doing is going from red to blue from the very beginning. The, the, the white dwarf is, is really red in the beginning when it's being born, and it gets hotter and hotter and hotter and starts expanding outwards greatly. Of course, there's a lot of work to do with that, but I have it backwards to their models so I can get it right once the star hits blue giant stages and then it starts collapsing on itself. If I were to have white dwarfs is going blue to red, 
then I would be struggling with the other point Daniel Daniel made was um let's see where did I put that? I mean, the, the internal process where it becomes crystalline structure. Now, if something becomes crystalline structure, now mind you, white dwarfs have the mass of the sun or greater. If they're just cooling and there's nothing to lose the mass, how exactly are they becoming crystalline structure? Because crystals, as far as I'm, I understand, are things like quartz, obsidian, emeralds, rubies, which are corundum, diamonds. So they're saying these white dwarf crystals, which are the size of the earth, are the mass of the sun, and are supposedly all over the galaxy? I highly doubt that. Because, for one, we've never observed it. Two, even if we had the chance to observe it, we've never had, we've never had any um, exoplanetary systems, which are evolved star systems, um, with these objects in there. They, they, don't, they don't even exist. This is all speculation on their part. And then, um, let's see, what else does Daniel write here? Some of the, uh, some of the ideas, um, yeah, it's, what's really frustrating to me is, uh, you could, we can't access the paper, um, independent researchers, uh, don't give access to their paper, I guess, because of the whole peer review process or the journals wanting to make money and all that. It's a bit frustrating at times because we want to see, like, what they're really writing about, what they're actually saying. But, um, let's see what else do I, ha what else do I have here? Um, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to give too much of Daniel's paper away. I would like people to, people to read it themselves. Um, some notes that I, I did make though, um, I guarantee you if we do find this paper, they're not going to make any mention of rocks and minerals. They're not going to make any mention of things like feldspar or quartz crystals or any of that a lot of it's just gonna be up in the air um i i hate to use the word but fantasy there the you're you're gonna have a giant planet like object just is this a giant diamond are you kidding me it doesn't dude in reality, the largest diamonds we've ever found are probably the size of your fist. Yet they're making entire planets out of a single... Wow. I can't even... I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> it's like, there are no observations of that anywhere. But, uh, all in all, I think what they're trying to do is... They're trying to skip over all planet formation models and the stellar evolution models that... Stellar Metamorphosis presents, I think they're going from here all the way over here. And mind you, there's no mass loss in between. So the crystalline structure they're proposing is super dense, made of pure carbon. There's these giant diamond planets, which have never been observed. When in reality, what I think happens is that the damn thing gets really freaking hot. And then it starts cooling as it expands outwards. And then it reaches a certain point where it reaches its maximum size, and then it starts collapsing on itself. And the material that it's composed of creates things like mole or molecules and crystalline structure then on as the star loses its mass. And, uh, oh yeah, comment on figure two. I just want to read this out. I thought this is pretty cool of Daniel. Comment on figure two. Figure two. With the original caption, the original caption turned out to be Chinese for some. I don't, know. I don't know why it did that on the PDF, but this is what they believe happens. This is their 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 stellar evolution models. Mainstream astronomy has many possible pathways for the evolution of stars. Brown dwarfs cool off and just fade away. Where they go is not mentioned. Stars are always stars in their models. Figure two shows the many weird ideas they have. There is no logic nor a clear natural evolution of stars. This nat natural evolution is evident with stellar metamorphosis. Stars are born hot and then and big and then cool and shrink and evolve into planets. The the very the various pathways they have is here's the protostar and then the weirdness occurs. But as you'll notice here, I think the brown dwarf is the small one. The brown dwarf is uh you know there and then it just fades away into nothing. 
it fades back into outer space. <laughs> the brown, a brown dwarf is an intermediate age star. When the brown dwarf loses its atmosphere, it becomes something like Jupiter, which then continues evolving, becoming like a gray dwarf, and then a Neptune world and an ocean world, and it keeps all the elements that it's composed of, and those elements combine into various chemical compounds. Anyways, good job, Daniel. Thank you so much for writing that. It's great. It is fantastic that we can get all these ideas in a formalized fashion put down, you know, instead of being on forums, instead of being on places where people could just be like, I don't like those ideas. And they, you know, they, they um, shadow ban you or uh, ban you from commenting on forums or delete your material and all that stuff. I think Phil Gibbs, his goal to make for making Vixers to make sure that new ideas had a place to flourish and to, for people to get their voices heard. And that's very important this day and age, especially with, you know, all the people getting their feelings hurt and various other, you know, politically correct um, stuff floating around. I don't want to talk about that stuff, but Vixra is, is where it's at. And another note, I don't know if Adam, you're watching this, um, Feel free to write new papers, even if you disagree with some of the ideas I present. It's completely fine. The goal for developing a new theory is to make sure that new ideas exist. You gotta make them exist. You gotta bring them up out of the aether, you know, and, and make them real. It doesn't matter if they're right or wrong, because one day we might figure out if it's a really great, I mean, right? One day we might figure it's wrong. You never know. You never know what's gonna happen.